Welcome to episode 4, Thumb Jockeys. Coming up, we have confirmation of two of Konami's finest coming to the iPhone, as well as news about the platform's first music-based shooter, Radio Flare. There are also reviews of Rolando, SimCity, and the Fast and the Furious pink slip to look forward to. So get in the saddle, keep your eyes on the prize, and giddy up. Yeehaw! A couple of weeks ago, we carelessly spread the rumour that Hideo Kojima, the man responsible for the Metal Gear series, was bringing his prized franchise to the iPhone. Amazingly, it turned out to be true, and we can expect to see the mustachioed solid snake of Metal Gear Solid The Guns of the Patriots stealthing it up on the iPhone soon. That said, it's not actually a stealth game. It's apparently a sort of on-rail sniper title where you use the touchscreen to pick off distant enemies. Only a couple of screenshots have emerged so far, and though it looks visually impressive, we can't help but be just a little bit disappointed that the iPhone isn't getting a more traditional Metal Gear outing. Even so, we have high hopes that Konami will deliver something special for iPhone. Watch this space for more info in the coming weeks. Konami's newfound love for the iPhone doesn't stop with Metal Gear Solid, and the company has announced that another beloved franchise, Silent Hill, is also coming to the platform. Silent Hill Escape is billed as a full 3D first-person shooter, and promises the same trademark atmospherics and grotesque menagerie that's been making gamers whimper with fear for the last 10 years. There hasn't been a good first-person shooter on the iPhone yet, and Konami's gamble could dilute the floundering license further, or give it a triumphant new set of tools to scare with. Either way, it's sure to be a big hitter on the App Store when it arrives, so a review in the coming weeks is assured. Music-based shooters make so much sense on a device that is essentially a supercharged iPod, so it's unsurprising that canny developer Studio Radio Laris is plugging the gap with Radio Flare. Comparisons to titles like Res are inevitable, but opting for a side-scrolling setup, Radio Flare is taking the formula back to basics and tailoring it perfectly to the iPhone in the process. So far, both the gameplay and the music look and sound great, and as long as there is a decent selection of music on offer to blast along to, Radio Flare should have no trouble standing out. Look out for a review in the next podcast. Not since the creation of the cinnamon bun has so much sweet satisfaction been rolled into one tight package. Rolando serves up a deliciously innovative design spiced with finger licking style. Or should that be finger flicking? The game is broken up into bite sized levels that have you guiding a number of Rolandos to an end goal. You move Rolandos by tilting your handset and make them jump with an upward flick of your finger. There are loads of tricky leaps and timed sequences to manoeuvre through, and tasks vary from hopping a few precarious platforms to negotiating handset twirling caves. There are achievements that add longevity too, and every level has hidden diamonds, a challenge time and extra Rolandos to be saved. Rolando looks as good as it plays. It's bright and bold, boasting a unique style and an exceptional soundtrack scored by top beatsmith Mr Scruff. It's just such a joy to behold in every respect, and though comparisons to Loco Roco are inevitable, Rolando makes the coveted colourful blob formula its own. Rolando is a sweet surprise, dishing out what is unquestionably the best game yet on iPhone. It achieves a hard-struck balance between ease of use and challenging gameplay. The only criticism to be made is about the wait for the second serving. The Fast and the Furious pink slip might sound like the latest in women's risque nightwear, but it's actually the name of iPlay's latest breakneck tarmac tour. Races involve putting your car on the line, losing your car rides off with your competitor, win and you get to add another gaudy LED spattered Subaru to your driveway. Your car collection is vital to your progression, as each is suited to different race types. During a standard race you want a good all-rounder that holds the road, but still allows you to drift into the corners. In a drift race, however, a car that's light on its back wheels works best. The graphics are spectacular, and the sense of speed will have you embarrassingly clinging to the old lady in the bus seat in front of you for dear life. Local multiplayer races are available between two devices, and you can actually claim the car of another human competitor, assuming they don't do the same to you. Raw rubber burning thrills are the focus here, rather than any kind of driving realism. And there's no denying that the Fast and the Furious pink slip is a very vulgar kind of cool. But it will have you living out boy racer fantasies you never knew you had, which ultimately makes this adolescent racing roller coaster ride worth embracing. Playing God comes naturally to gamers, but few games illustrate how difficult it is to be a truly omnipotent force. As an exercise in cause and effect, SimCity tests typical gaming instincts to the limit. You begin with simple tasks such as zoning your city into residential, commercial and industrial districts, progressing gradually to more complex decisions like budgeting education expenditure. Soon you have a sprawling metropolis literally at your fingertips that requires constant attention to run smoothly. It sounds like the council job from hell, but thanks to some excellent touchscreen controls and the series trademark eccentricities, 
games, SimCity is a joy to play. For instance, you can inflict a full-scale alien invasion on your microcosm, which is never more than a few clicks away thanks to an elegant icon-led interface. It's this playful tone that keeps things fun, which is important for a game that is essentially about town planning. Those expecting SimCity to yield the hanging gardens of Babylon after a few minutes screen prodding might end up frustrated, but a colourful team of advisors help prioritise decision making, easing the pressure for less experienced players. For seasoned seat holders on SimCity's council, however, the iPhone version is a pocket-sized marvel, as complete and well-rounded as you could hope for, and tailored perfectly to the platform. Thanks for watching the Pocket Gamer iPhone Gaming Podcast. If you're looking for more iPhone gaming news, reviews and features, you can download the Pocket Gamer iPhone application from the App Store. Or, just point your Safari browser at www.pocketgamer.co.uk forward slash iPhone. Better still, why not subscribe to this very podcast which can be found under Games and Hobbies in the podcast section of iTunes. That's it for now, so until next time, happy Pocket Gaming!